viral warts at the end of the day are viral infections uh, of the skin. Okay, affects only the superficial area of the skin. Okay, by human papilloma virus. We may classify this as a contagious issue. Most of the time, spread through by contact uh, from one person to the, to another person. Uh, having had contact there, I mean, this warts itself uh, affects, as I said, the superficial area of the skin, and then it buries itself down. Where do we expect these uh, conditions to be most profound? You see this a lot in younger kids, where the immunity has not been built up against uh, viral warts. Approximately, maybe anything from 5, 6 years old, all the way up to anyone as old as 60, 70, 80 years old. So kids are particularly susceptible. The elderly are particularly susceptible. Everyone else in between will have at, at one point in the time you know, of their life having developed viral warts before. Most of the time, most patients will be asymptomatic. They have got no symptoms. Usually, they turn up because it becomes a cosmetic embarrassment. May that be found on the face, the hands, or their foot itself. You know? Some patients will talk to you about how uncomfortable it may become uh, upon pressure if you put your foot down and if the, the wart is on your foot, some of them complain of discomfort and pain, okay? especially when they're running or, or, or weight-bearing activities. Most of them are not painful, they are not uncomfortable. You see lumps all over developing on, your, on the bottom of your foot, on your fingers, you know, on other areas of the skin. It can be very superficial, it can be raised off the skin, or it can penetrate deep you know, into the skin, especially those on the foot. We look at how we can try to help improve uh, the situation that the patient has. There are a few options that we, we, we can employ. The first option is, we call it benign neglect, which means we do nothing. Okay? So that is one thing that we can think about in very, very young kids, because most, ki most kids do not want to be traumatised in any of the treatments that we, you know, that we, we administer. At the end of the day, viral warts does not damage you immediately or pose you any immediate health threat. However, the only issue is spread. Okay? So we have to you know, think about if we, can, if we did nothing about it, we know a minority of these uh, uh, warts itself can self-resolve by itself. Over a period of two years, anything from 30 to 50% of these warts will disappear. Okay? If you're willing to wait for two years, on the flip side of waiting for, for, for these two years, we then take the chance that if it doesn't disappear, you can either have the same amount of warts at the end of two years or you can have more. If parents are more keen uh, to have treatments done, other options will include using creams. These will include very concentrated uh, acids that we apply straight and direct onto the wart itself. This can be done by, you know, at home, in the comfort of the home, parents can administer these treatments as long as they are counseled well how these things should be applied. What are the side effects that we can expect from these treatments? Well, that will be maceration of the skin, which means the skin becomes a bit mushy. Uh, but if you stop the, the, the application for two or three days, this should all nicely resolve. Again, there's a very good chance that we can get rid of these uh, warts with these simple measures. Treatment using these methods are painless, it's very cost effective, and it can be tried perhaps or perhaps a month or two months. And we can take it from there. Having said that, if these methods do not work, are there other measures? There are more destructive methods in trying to get rid of warts. Simple methods like liquid nitrogen is a destructive method. Over here, we use a canister, okay? Uh, and we spray a very cold liquid. Liquid nitrogen is about minus 196 degrees. What we are essentially trying to do is to contain a localized frostbite, okay? A frostbite material onto the, the wart itself. Freezing it sustains damage. You're freezing the wart itself, sustains some damage. Uh, and this is repeated every two weeks. The main side effects is pain. Discomfort is something that most people don't tolerate well, but it's something that is necessary to create such that the wart will be destroyed ultimately. Other things, other side effects that we may have will be blistering of, of, of the condition as a result of using liquid nitrogen. This is, I see as a necessary evil to try to again get rid of the wart itself. The more aggressive we are with liquid nitrogen, the more likelihood that we're going to get a good response. The more aggressive we are, the more likelihood that we're going to get a side effect with like pain or bad blisters. If not looked after well, these blisters can be infected and we can have an infection in that area. 
We are likely to treat this condition with liquid nitrogen depending on the area. If this was on the sole of your feet, that may take four sessions to anything up to eight sessions. If this was in your face or the dorsum of your hand, it may take one or two sessions. Even your fingernails, it may take eight or even more sessions in there. These sessions are spaced at fortnightly intervals and we continuously treat them till the warts disappear. Some patients will be recalcitrant to liquid nitrogen and they fail to improve with liquid nitrogen. Bearing in mind that, we then bring out the heavier, med heavier modalities of treatment. We may choose to cauterize under local anesthesia or use an ablative technique with a laser. In this circumstance, we can use a carbon dioxide laser and ablate the wart. How do we try to go ahead and do these things? We inject anesthesia to the, the, the locality of the wart. Thereafter, the patient will be anesthetized, they will be goggled, and the laser beam will then fall onto the ward. In doing so, the ward itself is actually absorbing uh, the energy of the laser beam and is vaporized in that process. Vaporizing the ward creates an indentation in the skin, where the dermatologist will then continuously scrape the area until we see no more ward, ward followed by a few more sessions in the same sitting with the same laser itself and eradicate the wart. This proves to be a very effective way of treatment. However, that can be a costly way of treatment. Okay? The patient is, has a wound in the area that takes approximately two to four weeks to heal. Most patients are concerned in that two to four weeks they will not be able to you know, uh, undergo any other physical activities. We can safely reassure them most, most physical activities can be resumed. They can continue to run. There's no issue. There might be some slight discomfort, but they should not be having tremendous pain as a result of this procedure. The procedure remains one of the more costly but more effective method that can be, you know, used almost within within one session, and we can treat that effectively. The cure rates are in, in excess of 80 to 90 percent. Okay. Having said that, we must again tell the patients what are the risks that we have in doing this procedure. One is scarring good treatments eventually damage the entire area. There is a possibility of scarring. There is also a possibility of infection in the area. Some physicians, some dermatologists may elect to use oral antibiotics to cover when they use a carbon dioxide laser. Now, this becomes, if we look at this, are there any other modalities that we can, we can inflict uh, on, on the ward itself to try to remove? Other lasers have been thought about using, uh, that we use. These will inc include the vascular laser, vascular Pulse dye laser. These are V-beam lasers that we try basically to target the blood vessels supplying the ward itself. Okay. Allowing the laser to fall on the ward itself coagulates or shrinks the blood vessels supplying the ward. As a result, shrinking the viral ward in the process. Again, this has to be done on numerous visits. It could be anything from three to six visits. The good point about these use of the vascular laser over the carbon dioxide laser would be pain control. There's way less pain using the V-beam laser on these warts with good results, not as good as, as carbon dioxide laser, but good results to try to effect you a cure. There are things like injection of bleomycin. These are uh, very caustic materials. Very difficult uh, to administer because any injection into any wart create, creates tremendous pain. But these are other options that we may consider. Some patients who are to have very extensive warts, if we're looking at hundreds and hundreds of warts, some of us may consider use as some data to suggest some oral medications. And these oral medications are cymetidine. Cymetidine itself is actually a medication that we use to treat gastric irritation. But there's data to show that if we use it on a high dose, that we can improve the situation of this patient with multiple wards that cannot be amenable to treatment with local lasers and multiple liquid nitrogens. Having said that again, it comes with its side effects. High dosing of these medications cause gynecomastia, which means breast formation in men. And so this must be tempered with how we try to improve the situation in these patients. If we're looking at treating viral warts, viral warts is not something that we say we can treat and we can give you 100% assurance that you'll totally disappear. It's important to understand viral warts are... It's not an easy condition to treat. 
Having had all these modalities, that is the reason why we've got so many modalities in the first place. Can we effect a cure? I think we can. Okay, but the risk of recurrence remains. Depending on which procedure, may that be from liquid nitrogen, it has over 80% chance of cure, a carbon dioxide laser, over 90% chance of cure. There is still about 10%, 15% chance that in the next three to six months that this thing recurs. I think, realistically speaking, in the next six to eight months after a treatment and it's not appeared again, we can safely assure or assume that the patient has been cured. But before that, it's important that the patients keep a lookout after treatment, even if it's totally cleared in the next four ensuing three months that they should you know, look at the area where it's been treated to see if there's any chance of recurrence. Because if there is, you know, most of us will recommend early treatment rather than waiting it to you know, penetrate deep in the skin or become much more extensive before we start treatment. If you're going to look at a, a callosity, a corn and a wart itself, uh, this is a, is a common misnomer among a lot of practitioners because they don't uh, subdivide it well. If you look at callosity on, 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 a fl on someone's foot, for example, callosity is just hardened skin, extra layers of skin. And you can see that there, the, the, there are actually skin lines running in, in these areas. And that itself is a kill callosity. A wart itself is actually quite clear. You can actually see the whole viral particle, the whole viral wart itself, punctate by its little blood vessels in the area. And that makes a wart. And a viral wart is a virus. A callosity is a hardened skin as a result of friction uh, that you have on, on friction areas. A corn is a response of your skin on areas with very intense pressure. And that looks can, can mimic a viral wart. Okay? It looks almost like a viral wart because it's the, the, the skin lines are totally lost like a viral wart, but it does not have the blood vessels that is supplying a viral wart. So some physicians may have difficulty or may confuse a corn and a wart. That is common and can sometimes be very difficult. This we can help if we start to pair. Uh, pair which means we take a blade and we start to skin, take layers of the skin away. And you can see in a viral wart, it will start to bleed. In the corn itself, it will start to disappear and you start to have your normal skin lines appearing again. So, you know, three things there, there are three different uh, conditions, but the diagnosis can be made quite clearly, I mean, in, in experienced hands. How can we best try to prevent these uh, from seeding onto, onto anyone? I think it becomes very difficult. These warts are ubiquitous, it's everywhere, uh, you know, and it's a very common condition. So if you're talking about prevention, is there a certain way that we can try uh, to consume some kind of food, etc. I think that will not be rather possible. There have been talk in the media that talks about taking certain kinds of food that can enhance immunity. Uh, certain uh, application of certain different creams that they apply on the skin from different practitioners or alternative practitioners. There's no great science to, to, to substantiate that, that claim.